Hi, welcome to this video on building ASP.NET applications on an Apple Mac. Now I run a number of development courses focused on ASP.NET, Azure, AWS and so on. And when I run my ASP.NET development courses, I'm always using a Windows virtual machine with the necessary tooling installed. My laptop of choice is actually an Apple MacBook. Originally this was because I used to dabble in iPhone development, but since then I've gotten used to the OSX operating system and perhaps more importantly, because it forced me to use a virtualization tool to run Windows, I got into the habit of performing all development in a virtual machine and this helped me to maintain clean environments that I was happy to destroy and rebuild as required without the pain of being in without a working laptop while the rebuild was happening. A common request I get from my students is, can I use my MacBook to take your course? I've always responded to set up their laptop in the same way I have, i.e. run Windows virtual machines on a virtualization platform such as Parallels Desktop or the free virtual box. However, in recent years, since Microsoft purchased Aramin and the release of .NET Core, Visual Studio for OS X and Visual Studio Code, the option to build .NET applications natively on OS X is easier than ever. One sticking point has always been SQL. My courses often use SQL Server Express, and of course, this just doesn't work on OS X. So the final piece of the puzzle to have a truly native environment is we could use Docker and a tool called Azure Visual Studio to connect to a SQL instance. By using Docker, we can spin up a Linux container running SQL for Linux. And as I said, we can use the Azure Data Studio to give us a nice IDE for managing the databases within it. So in this video, I'm going to step through just how we set up the OSX to operate system to build .NET apps natively. The first step is, of course, to download the Visual Studio IDE. In Safari, go to visualstudio.microsoft.com and from the main page, we want to click the link for the community edition of the Visual Studio IDE. As I said earlier, you could go for the Visual Studio code, but this one's just a little bit more similar to people who've used the Windows version. Click the link to start downloading it. Once it's downloaded, open it up from your downloads folder and then hit the install. If you're asked if you're happy to open a downloaded app from the internet, just go ahead and click open and simply go through the installation process. If you want, you could turn off the Android and iOS options or on the Mac options if you're not bothered for doing that. I'm just going to select the defaults and click install. This will go ahead and download the various tools. So for example, it will download the Mono framework, which is a requirement because that's what converts .NET into something the OS X can understand. Occasionally, you will get pop-ups asking you to enter your password while it tries to install the various different components. But basically, just wait for that to finish, go and make yourself a brew, and when you come back, hopefully it will all be done. Once it is installed, Go into Find and Applications and run the Visual Studio application. Personally, for applications I run a lot, I often like to add the application icon and uh, keep it in the dock. With Visual Studio installed, we could actually go ahead straight away and build a new project just to test that everything's installed OK. So from the main screen, go to New Project. We could create .NET Core applications, but as I said, this is about showing how we can build and run full .NET applications or .NET 4.6. So I'm going to choose other .NET and I'm going to say ASP.NET MVC project. I won't bother with the Wave API, I will use MVC. I will include unit tests, why not? We'll give it a name and click create. The first time you run the project, it'll start to install the NuGet packages for the MVC framework. And so you'll get the odd pop-up asking you to accept licenses. Go ahead and accept those. Once it's finished and it's ready to go, we can do a sample build. And if that all works, we can actually go ahead and run the software. So that gives us the basic website, but a lot of websites are data driven and this is where we come to one of the biggest problems with using Visual Studio on the Mac, which is we don't have a local instance of SQL Server. 
Now there's a number of options we could use. We could use MySQL or something like that, but I do still like to use a, a proper Microsoft SQL. So the way we're going to get around that is we're going to use something called Docker, which allows us to run different operating systems on our Apple Mac. They're kind of like small virtual machines. So to get Docker, the first thing we want to do, go to docker.com. We want to go to products and Docker desktop. And then we want to download for the Mac. If you've not created yourself an account, you'll need to sign up to create an account. Once we've got our account logged in, it will allow us to go ahead and get Docker. So once that's downloaded, go ahead and run the Docker installation program. Simply drag Docker into our apps. And now I'm going to our apps and run Docker. Click next and OK. Enter your Mac password. This is just to give it rights to install the software. And then again, it's going to ask you to log on with your Docker ID. So again, enter the information that you entered when you registered your account. A lot of what you can do in Docker can be done from the command line prompt. However, with Docker for OS X, you can get a, a great tool called Kitematic. And we get to it by clicking in the Docker icon at the top and going to Kitematic. So this is basically telling you that we can use Kitematic as a UI to help manage your Docker containers. As I say, you can do it all from the command prompt, but personally, I find Kitematic, especially when you're new to Docker, just a bit easier and quicker to use. Because that's not installed, we have to go and download it. So we'll go and follow the link that it, where it tells us to download it here. And that starts the download. Again, okay, once that's downloaded, is open it in Finder and then drag it into your applications and then run it from your applications. When Kitematic launches, you'll be again asked to sign in. And again, use the same user that you created when you registered for Docker Hub. Okay, so from here we can actually search for base images within Docker. And luckily, Microsoft have already made a Linux image available with the SQL for Linux installed on it. So first of all, search for Linux SQL, and we want the image by Microsoft, so MS SQL Server hyphen Linux. If that's not coming up, actually enter that in your search bar. So MS SQL hyphen server hyphen Linux. And then what we want to do is click this create button here. So what that will do is that will connect to the Docker Hub and download the MS SQL Server Linux image onto our local machine. Once that's downloaded, it's going to automatically start. However, when it does try to start, it's going to actually fail. And we can see through these container logs here that what's actually trying to happen on the server itself is that it wants this EULA license to be accepted. We also need to be able to enter a SQL Server password, and at the moment it's not allowing us to do that. So what we need to do is, with our Linux server highlighted, go over to the Settings tab, and we want a couple of extra environment variables. The first is accept EULA, and we want it to be minus Y. Next, we want another variable, which is SA underscore password, and we need to set that to a password. Click Save. Now, actually, we can see through the logs, it said it was listening, but actually, we can see um, unable, uh, unable to set the administrator password. So the password I've set is too short. Let's just go back in, put some mix of capitals, upper and lowercase, and an exclamation mark. Let's save that. So this time, it stays running. We can see that the status is running. Now, this says normally this would listen on uh, port 1433. However, because this is running in a, a Docker VM, that could conflict with anything we've got running locally. So what we can see here is in this window on the home screen, we've got the access URL. So the actual connection to the server is that local host 
3272. Now it will be different for you, it's random every time it starts up, but we'll need that when we try to connect to the server. So at the moment we've no tools to easily connect. So another great tool that's uh, fairly recently become available is called Azure Data Studio. So do a search for Azure Data Studio and go ahead and install it from the download link. So we want the Mac installer. Once our Azure Studio has finished downloading, just go again, show it in the finder. And as we did with the Kitematic, let's just drag it to our applications into our applications and then run the Azure Data Studio and once it's launched it will bring it up the Azure Studio and what we need to do is create a connection so there's a couple of ways we can do this we can either click new connection here or we can go up here and click this little plus by there that says new connection so the connection type is going to be SQL Server and the need to put in the server address here so if we go back to our Kitematic, we can see the access URL here. Normally when SQL installs, it will install on port 1433, but when we run this using Docker, actually it goes on a, a separate port. The idea is, is that you might have multiple Docker servers all running, and so each one needs to be on a different port from the respect of your machine. So, enter the that in now by default it has a colon we need to replace that colon with a comma the authentication type is SQL login with the username of SA and the password that we set in the configuration and we can tell it to remember that and then just to test it let's just go ahead and click connect so all being well we will then see a connection to the database we'll see a number of databases that we've got on there as you can see I've already created some before and we can from there we know we've got a connection that is fully working so now we've got everything in place we're actually ready it can go ahead and start building new applications so I'm now going to go back and launch Visual Studio for Mac um, I've closed my last project so I'm starting again what I'm going to do this time though is I'm going to clone a project from my github so in my github repository so that's github forward slash complete coder i've got a repository called my shop underscore mac now this is the same project i have in my that i use in my training courses in my uh, real world asp.net development training course but it's been rejigged and re compiled for the Mac and there's a few little bits that when you create projects natively in the Mac that it does a little bit differently to Windows and so this is why I need to do this so rather than start from my Windows projects that um, I would normally uh, expect people to go to to check um, I would use this one if you're doing the work on a Mac so anyway once we hit there so we're in uh, my shop underscore Mac I'm going to copy this URL here and then I'm going to go back into Visual Studio and at the top here I'm going to go to version control and checkout and in this URL here I'm going to paste in the path to my project I'm going to just make sure it's going where I want it to go on my computer and then I'm simply going to click checkout so once that's restored, this is my project. Uh, we'll want to right click the project and say re uh, restore NuGet packages. The next thing we're going to need to do is go into the web.config and update the connection string to point to the Docker host. As you can see in the project, I've already got it set to um, an example one local host slash that port, which uh, just so happens to match up to the port that I've got set running on my machine. The other slight difference to note is that in the SQL project, in the Windows version, we use migrations to automatically generate the tables. Now, because this is Mac, we don't have the migrations commands, or at least for this version of the framework. It only works in .NET Core. But what we can do is we can set the project to automatically migrate and update the database in response to whatever our model is. But there's a few slight tweaks we need to make to that. 
The first is we need to add this internal seal class within our data context. And again, if this doesn't mean anything to you, it's because it's all based on my real world ASNet development training course. But this internal seal class here, when we have this configuration and we set automatic migrations enabled equals true. And then the other thing we have in our public data context up here, normally this is blank, but what I need to do is this set initializer and then say new migrate database to latest version. And then I add in the data context, which is a bit weird because this is called within the data context. But there you go. And then we pass in this configuration, which is just telling it to automatic migrate equals true. So that's the only real change we need to make. We can now go ahead and run this project or we can click the run up here to actually launch the website and that will launch the website. Now because it's an empty website it's going to have no users in um, and what happens is when it tries to access the database it'll see that the tables don't exist and as long as it can connect to the server it will go ahead and create them. So the first thing you'd have to do is go ahead and register a user just by clicking the register button and again in the background that just creates all our necessary tables. Um, I've already created one so once you've registered a new user I'll just log in with the one I created earlier and that logs me in. Uh, but what we don't have now is the admin functions. So what we need to do is go back into here and we need to create the admin functions. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create an SNET, an ASNet role which is admin. So I've gone into the SQL Studio Manager. I've right clicked my database and I've said new query. Okay, and I'm going to run this tsql command insert into ASNet roles ID name, values new ID and admin. So we'll run that. And then if we go and right click the ASNet roles table and edit data, we'll see we've created our name. And what we're, we're going to need this ID. We're also going to need an ID from my user that I've registered. So now we've got our user ID and our roles. And then finally, what we need to do, let's just close that one down. We want to go to the ASNet user roles. So we'll edit that. And that's a blank table. So we want our user ID from the user table. And then we want the ID from the roles table. Then hit enter. And now if we go back to our website and I just refresh the page, we should get the admin. If you don't get the admin, you might just need to log off and back on again. And then from there, we can go into the admin and we can start doing everything else that we need to do. So go in and create categories and products and so on. One last thing to mention is that in the web Dot config from the um, GitHub project we've downloaded. I'm actually um, setting a DB user and password. Now, by default, that's not used. What you could do is just use the SA user and the password that you set for your SQL server. Or the other option is you could go and create yourself a new user, which is best practice. And to do that, let's go back to our SQL user studio and the command we do we create a, a new TT command we have create login and username with password and go and then we create a user make sure you've selected the right database here we'll put create user again the name of your user actually that should be that again for logging using the login that you get up there so that's the database user and that's the SQL server login and that way you can then go and create users for your database so as you can see we now have a complete development platform that we can run on OS X it has got a few items missing most namely the scaffolding which is the biggest problem at the moment but I'm sure Microsoft will be adding that at some point but beyond that Everything works absolutely fine.